doing things theoretically. We will see these things by hands on. So I, I guess you have understood there was one question like uh, whether we are taking a positive likelihood or negative likelihood. So one above will be your likelihood positive and less than one will be your likelihood negative. So in one, uh, this uh, column, it's both likelihood positive and negative. So now let's understand the uh, demo data set and the data set has been given to you. So in this data set, uh, I am seeing the metabolic uh, syndrome in adolescent. So I have to do a ROC analysis and I, I wish to see the efficacy of waist to height ratio, which is the WHTR waist to hip ratio. In the data set, it is with the name of WHR, BMI and waist circumference as predictor for metabolic syndrome in adolescent. So I have to identify the optimal cutoff for each these predictors and interpret the area under the curve and so that's why I have to identify the optimal cutoff. Remember, that's the task. And I have to assess which anthropometric indicator serves the best predictor for male and female. So again, there is a I, I don't have to do overall. So there is an overall also and there's a gender wise also. So this is the data set. I'll show you in the jam movie. So the first column is ID, then there is a gender, then age, weight. Height, waist circumference, height, this is head circumference, BMI, waist, height ratio, waist, hip ratio. And this metabolic syndrome is 1, 0, where 1 is present and 0 is absent. So now, uh, this I think, yes. So there's one more concept, how to decide for the sample size. If you wish to uh, conduct a study you uh, determining these cutoff in the diagnostic accuracy, how to decide uh, for the sample size. So we had conducted one webinar on the sample size in diagnostic accuracy. So you can go and see this. And uh, we have pasted the YouTube link also. And uh, then uh, this is again one more uh, sample size calculator of these diagnostic accuracy. So if you click that, you can see that this is a sample size calculator using AUC. So here in the option, you can see here the prediction model area under the curve. So if you click this based on your area under the curve, like this, uh, if you say that your area under the curve is at least it should be 0.7. And this null hypothesis, it is kept as 0.5 because at 0.5, you see that there is no discrimination. So this, uh, it takes automatically. And then prevalence again, this prevalence is needed uh, to calculate the sample size. This is the ratio of positive and total sample size. So this 0.5, if you have, if you know the prevalence in your area, or you can take a prevalence based on your clinical judgment. And this type one error rate is 5%, which we fix. And this one minus beta that is power is 80%. And if you press calculate, you can see that uh, it will show you the total sample size of 72, out of which you need 22 positive case and at least 50 negative case. So this is a minimum sample size. If you want your, whatever, if you're seeing that your new test is at least having the 0.7, because we know that at least 0.7 is acceptable beyond beyond that i mean less than that it is not acceptable at all so this is the regarding the sample size uh, consideration of uh, such tests so again uh, if you wish to share the link in chat okay so kushum chad is sharing the link in the chat and this is the start uh, guideline for reporting the diagnostic accuracy studies. So you can refer to these guidelines. So if you wish to perform a diagnostic accuracy study, then these are the guidelines to check whether you have included the all the component or not. So now we'll go to the uh, Jamovi dataset.
So those of you who have installed the Jamovie, you go to the window here. Click and then write Jamovie. So in my case, you will see that there is a, this icon will uh, be there. You can, if you double click this, the Jamovie data set, which we have shared that, uh, that, I mean, if you want to open some other data set, you can go like this, but the data set, which we have shared, you can directly go and click that link. So I have, since I have opened this, so this data set is visible. This is the same data set, which we have just discussed. I will again discuss and I will uh, show you some options, uh, the basic ones also. So those of you who have downloaded the uh, initial part for the first time, you will see that you will not have those many options. So now a uh, few words about Jamovi. Those of you who have attended or who are working on Jamovi might find it repetitive. But those of you who are attending for the first time, let me explain for uh, all of you. So this is Jamovi interface. You can see there is a data view and this is the result view. So uh, it is different from SPSS because in the same view, you can get uh, the both the result and the data set. And the uh, interface is uh, very much dynamic. If you uh, press something, then result will be here. And in the analysis, you can see this is the variable section. So in my this thing, I have got this ID, gender, age, height, weight, BMI, waist hip ratio, and this is the metabolic syndrome. If you click something, like if you I, I double click this, you can see that variable is there where gender is there. You can define this measure like whether it is nominal, ordinal, or then you, <clears throat> these are the levels. Means male and female, and you can give a code to it. This is the age. You can see right now it is showing a nominal, but again, I need to change it to continuous because age is a continuous. So when you import the Excel sheet, uh, many times you will have to correct uh, these data variables. You need to like change the measure type and the integer and uh, likewise. So you can go like this, seeing each and every variable. So weight is continuous, so it is okay. Then again, you can go to height is continuous. You can go to this waist circumference, height, head circumference, BMI, waist height ratio, waist hip ratio, and then metabolic syndrome because zero is okay slow i need to be slow okay okay so from where should i uh, repeat since beginning robin and samarpita is again asking how to open data set in jam movie okay so like if you are importing let me sh uh, tell you that uh, right now we have uh, okay okay yes yes i'm sorry let me explain you that uh, i am explaining you but regarding all descriptive statistics there is a session uh, webinar which is available at the Merit India website because there are a lot of other options like uh, filter and transform, compute. Uh, so that uh, option you can do right now for regarding import. You can, can you see uh, this uh, link here? Three uh, parallel lines, four. You click on that. Okay, I'm sorry. I should have shown that. Then click on open. If you click on open, it will ask you to browse. Then click on browse and then you show the path where you have shown like Delia is writing, you have saved the data sheet on desktop. So go to desktop, you may click the desktop and then you can import the file. And you can see here, Jamovi imports all sort of files like Jamovi, CSV, SPSS, even it converts the SPSS files into the uh, Jamovi format. R, Stata, SA, SAS, JASP, it can take all these data file type. So that's why I have not changed it because uh, no need to specify that this is an Excel. Those of you who have uh, imported the files in SPSS, there we need to specify that this is an Excel file. But in Jamovi, you don't need to specify that this is an Excel file because it takes all these data file set. And then you, if you click like OK, I'm not doing it because it's already there, but uh, you can click and you can do it simultaneously. Delia and Samarpita, you can do it right now and then you will be able to open that in the Jamovi. I'm waiting for all of you to open that data set so that we can do it simultaneously. 
Okay, so Robin is writing something as per the YouTube video. Can you go up, up seeing the... As per the YouTube video, we don't click on import. So basically, uh, there uh, many times we have shown the data set as, uh, uh, you know, this jam movie because we have already imported. Maybe that is missed here, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm showing you again. Go to open. Don't import or special import. Open. Go to browse and then browse that. Show it the path and click on open. It will be open. But after, again, like I said, after you open, go to these variables and change the nature of these variables because many times whatever you have written in the Excel that might get sometimes distorted in Jamovi. So specify each and every variable uh, like uh, I have just shown you regarding its nature of the variable or uh, the continuous nature or etc. Those things specify and then this is regarding the variable. Now this is the data set. Okay, so Saurabh is writing, the, um, continue. This is the gender, age, all these are uh, there. Again, uh, those of you who have uh, downloaded Jamovi for the first time, you will see that you are uh, having option only till this. Frequencies, regression, ANOVA, t-test and exploration. These options are not there. It may not be there in your case. So you need to install this. So how will you do that? Right now, I am showing it only for this ROC, but you can see like if you want to do survival analysis, factor analysis, or these linear modules I have uh, written, I have downloaded this J power also, then this uh, SCM that is the structural equation modeling. So depending on the need, you can download this. How you can download, how you can add this? Can you see a plus sign here, all of you? If you see a plus sign, it will show you the Jamovi library and then uh, the how what module I have installed. So if you go to Jamovi library, it will show you the installed versus available. So in available, you uh, please uh, press that PPDA, PsychoPDA. There are others also you can see. There are many options and the all the community they are they keep on adding all these uh, you know modules so these are uh, many options depending on your need you can click like if i click install let's say item response theory if i click on install it is showing that it it is installing and then that icon will be available on that upper ribbon part which we were just seeing so it will take some time No, to open Excel, you don't need to install any other module. The basic one, uh, because it is a Excel data set, so you only need to click the uh, open and then show it the path and then it will be open uh, in that data set. If, is there, if there is a problem, you can discuss this in the uh, mind does not show browse. It is not browse. It is oh, okay. I, it should not be there. Let me see. Okay, you can show it in the uh, rather breakout room or through any desk. Like mentor can approach your uh, PC. Oh, you have sent the pic on the group. Okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll see this, Delia. Yours is a Mac version, na? Okay, so we'll ask someone to uh, resolve this matter. But for rest of them, I think uh, it, it, it should be there. So till the time it that is. Time, and PC. then. PC. She's okay, 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 let me. So uh, you are there on the data. Let's see, when you click on open, uh, there is uh, something known as the this PC. Okay, okay. Let me. See, see there is uh, this PC. And there is something as the data library. So data library is the library in the Jamovi. So that's why uh, this, if you click this, then uh, you will not get. So go to this PC, click this, and then it should be there. Then uh, uh, coming to uh, the other analysis. 
So right now I'll show you this PPDA. This is the PPDA. So I will click this PPDA option and then we can see Oh, it it was it is like uh, that module is getting installed. Maybe that uh, that's why maybe it is uh, not taking the commands. So can you see right now why this is not taking the commands? Because that is getting installed. Probably let me see. I was just showing them. Uh, So maybe I need to close this and reopen this. So I've closed this because that was not getting open. So I'll again go with this data because that's the file which I have saved. Now it, it has come. Initially, it was not showing. So you can see that if you click this, this uh, will come. Now I'll go to this. I need to delete this. Let me show. If you click that, uh, let me move these back. So it will be like this. There will be something written here. And here it will be a box of dependent variable and then there will be a class variable and then there will be a group variable. So uh, what I need to check the presence of metabolic syndrome. So this metabolic syndrome is a class variable. So I have moved this data set here and I'm showing you with the first one and let's see with the waste uh, height ratio. So I have moved this waste height ratio to the dependent variable. And you can see here that this is a scale variable. So here it will take only scale variable. And this class variable is a, a dichotomous variable, whether uh, presence of metabolic syndrome or absence of metabolic syndrome. And I will have to see it in the male and female. So this is a group variable. So I'll take this gender here in the grouping variable. So let's without uh, do it without uh, gender. And then we'll do it with gender. So if you see this, you can see the result. Why it is coming a very light gray. Okay. Here you can see that uh, I have to show all positive case as one. So this one I have uh, kept it like that. Then coming to visualization. One means like presence of one is the presence of metabolic disease. That this plot I have kept like ROC and then if you have to click that sensitivity specificity table. Be, before that, let me show you, uh, make you understand the interpretation. So this has given you the cutoff point. So it has given you the cutoff point 4, cutoff point 0 0.51, 0 0.52, 0 0.53 and 0 0.54. And this is giving you the sensitivity and specificity of each of these cutoff point, the positive predictive value, the negative predictive value, and the Udens index. Remember, we discussed regarding the Udens index and maximum Udens index, we uh, take uh, for the deciding the cutoff. And this is the area under the curve. So area under the curve is same for all the, uh, because uh, it is the power of the, that, uh, the discrimination power of the test. So it is 0 0.96. So what is the interpretation of 0 0.96? That means it is a very excellent. And uh, this is a metric score. So basically metric score, we'll see what is this metric score. So if you see the cutoff, so here on the basis of Udens index, which cutoff you will select? Yes, all of you, please write in the chat box. Which cutoff to select? 0.52 or 0.54, yes, because there are two cutoff. 
based on the student's index. So 0.52 is having a 88% sensitivity and 93% specificity. And 0.54 is having 81% sensitivity and 99% specificity. Now it is up to you because then you can write in the interpretation that you got two cutoff. But if you want a more sensitive test, then you will go with a cutoff of 0.52. If you want a more specific test, then you will go for this cutoff of 0.54. So you may have a case like you can see here that you have got a two cutoff where the Udens index is high. Then you will go with these specific, this thing like sensitivity, whether you want a high sensitivity specificity, you can uh, take the criteria of uh, positive and negative predictive value also here because you see that positive predictive value of 0.54 is more. It is 95%. So maybe you can take this. So depending on your need, you can uh, take a cri criteria which cutoff to use. Then if you click this sensitivity specificity table, you will see that you get a sensitivity and this is the ROC curve. So ROC curve, remember, can you see these points? So these are the sensitivity and specificity across each of the cutoff. And then this, if you join these line, it makes the ROC. So ROC is the uh, graph between the, on the X axis, you have got a one minus specificity. On Y axis, you have got the sensitivity. And here, since the output of this, Jamovi is like a word interface. So you can write here. So I can write that the cutoff decided by the Jordan's index. So you can keep on writing here and then you can just copy this image or if you want to copy all analysis, then you can copy this and then you can open a Microsoft Word. So let me open a Microsoft Word. So maybe this one, this is already a Microsoft Word document. And you can copy paste it. So these results, I can go to a new page. And I can copy paste. So you will see that there is some like all these things have been copied like this is the graph. It has been copied and the table also this was the table which we were seeing. This also got copied. Okay. And then you can write here also. So I was showing you here in the, the can you see this blue one? So below each this thing you can type, okay, you can do that in your uh, Jamovi output. So this is there and then this is the individual sensitivity and specificity table at each cutoff. Remember, we have shown you that with each cutoff, it makes a 2 by 2 table. So it is showing you a 2 by 2 table with a 0.54, with 0.53 with 0 0.52, 0 0.51, etc. So this was the sensitivity and specificity. So if you, have, if you have understood up till this point, then I will show you across this group variable. Are you people uh, there with me? Okay, I don't see. In graph, how many cutoffs are labeled? So in graph, uh, you will see in graph, it is not the many cutoff. It is only showing you this is the uh, ROC. This graph does not tell you the cutoff actually. This graph is only to say this is the area under the curve. So this graph is showing this 0.96 value, the area under the curve, okay? By graph, you cannot say that what is the cutoff because this graph is between the sensitivity and one minus specificity. This graph is not on the absolute value of this cutoff, remember? Did you understand? 
with graph we are not deciding the cutoff with graph we are deciding the discriminatory part of the test graph is only to decide the area under the curve area under the curve of this is 0.96 so review if you review the udens index see the, the table is there in front of you the udens index is dots dots are the sensitivity and specificity at each point at each cutoff but that cutoff is not visible that cutoff if i click that okay i click if i click that i deliberately i did not click but if i click this all observed now you see you will have these many sensitivity specificity at every cutoff 0 0.26 0 0.27 can you see and this those many points are there in this graph okay it can be identified but it is not very easy because for that how will you draw then you will have to do manually it can be identified on graph pratap but for that you need to put it in excel and then you have to measure and those things but when you have got something calculated statistically why will you go on the graph graph here is just that that was just to show the pectoral representation but for individual point you cannot decide it on graph because in graph you don't have a cutoff here you can see how will then you need coordinate point at each level so there are these many points are there can you see this table but using this table this graph has been identified this one i don't know whether you people have understood pratap have you understood this j it cannot if you have got a thousand data set how will you identify that on graph no it is not possible why it is not possible because for every single that's what i said na these are all at each you can see and i have not plotted the waste uh, this uh, uh, bmi if you take bmi there will be so many values you cannot uh, do that so that's why if you see here at each of these cut off you have got this sensitivity specificity positive predictive value negative predictive value and udens index that's why i don't click this if you uncheck this this software uh, gives you the uh, the cut off based on the udens index and then based on that you can decide which you have to take this facility is not there in spss in spss for udens index you have to import the sheet on excel and then you have to calculate it manually and then you have to do it here you will get this automatically have you understood i don't know uh, where, where where is the confusion okay your output window is blank okay uh, okay we'll see that in the uh, probably in the uh, breakout room okay so you need to ask one doubt okay robin if it is related up till this point then i can answer yes okay it let me close this once again that's what i did let me open it once again yes robin you wanted to ask any question you can unmute and ask for different cut off we have same yes 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 different why because uh, this auc is the area under the curve so area under the curve is for the whole curve it is not for the uh, individual cut off but uden will be for the individual cut off so like if this was for the one this thing if i have to okay let me use the practice one because oh it is already there many analysis i am using this another sheet because so this i have clicked and you have to click this test roc 
if you click this test ROC, no, no, no. It is right in my system. So now what I was showing you that you can move this here to the class and then we were seeing with this and uh, all positive class was one. So here visualization ROC. So this was the one. If you want to increase the, this view, you can do it like that. So this was the one which we have seen. If you want to compare it across the gender, then you can put this. This option is again not there in the, uh, this thing, in the SPSS. So for gender, you can see, you will have a ROC curve combined. So if you can see here, the waist hip ratio, you will get two tables here. So for male, it is giving you one cutoff, 0.54. And, okay, Saurabh is writing why positive class is taken as one. Because if you go to the variable, if you see the maths, here you have written one to all those because you are saying that you have you want to predict or you want to classify the person as diseased. Since you have given the code one to the diseased, that's why you have taken the positive class as one. If your code is something different, like you can put 1 and 2, then you take that number where you have given that code as disease positive. In my case, since it is 1, that's why I have kept it as 1. Okay. So now you can see there are two output window. Here it is 0.54 for male. Uh, only single and in female it is giving you three cutoff 0 0.5, 0 0.51 and 0 0.52 and Newton's index it is giving 0.81 for this. So depending on your need you can take either 0 0.51 or 0 0.52 and we have discussed that AUC will be same because AUC is the area under the curve. The curve is one curve for male and one curve for female. So AUC is the overall area, but Uden's index is for each cutoff point. That's why Uden's index is different and AUC is the same. And then you can decide about the, again, we have discussed this issue regarding the sensitivity and specificity. So at the same value of Uden's index, what do you want more specific test or more sensitive test or regarding the uh, predictive value and then you can write the same in ROC in the your interpretation. This is the comparative curve. So you, here you can say and th then I was telling you regarding uh, this uh, sensitivity specificity uh, table that you can also click but right now you can have a separate ROC curve also. If I uncheck that you will get two separate ROC curve. So this will be the ROC curve for male and this will be the ROC curve for female. If I click on combine plot, then you can have in one graph both ROC male and female. So this is regarding the comparison. Now coming to the comparison of more than one indicator. So if I want other indicator also, like if I want to test waist height ratio, waist and the waist hip ratio. So this is waist height, waist hip and let's say if I want waist circumference also. So there are three criteria. Now which one is the best? You can see the result and depending on the AUC, you tell me which is the best. So this is the waist height. What is the Uden's index of waist height? It is 0.96. If you come to waist hip ratio, what is the, uh, sorry, uh, AUC. AUC is of waist hip ratio is 0 
and AUC of waist circumference is 0.89. So which one is the best? So waist height. All of you are right. Followed by next, who is the second number? Waist height is first. Agree. Waist circumference, yes. Because it's, it's AUC is 0.89. Whereas this waist hip ratio is the worst because it is having area under the curve as 0 0.60, which is acceptable or not acceptable? Acceptable or not acceptable? At least we should have 0.7. Yes, not acceptable. So I will write that this was not acceptable at all. And then this, you can show it in the result. Then coming to, again, since this table is a huge table, waist circumference. So you can, you should not give this host whole table as a result. And then you can select few uh, based on this highest. You, In fact, here you will not give this waist circumference. You will say that, this was not acceptable. So I have moved this back to this window and now you can compare these two. And then you can see the significance of these AUC. So for that, I was talking about one option which was the D-Longs test. So if you click this D-Longs test, then you can see here that it gives you the D-Longs test of difference between the AUC. So there is a difference between these AUC. One is 0.96, another is 0.89. Okay, by by mistake. No, that I have moved it back. Now it is 0 0.60. And point again, this 0 0.60 is not acceptable. But initially, when I put that waist circumference, this was showing. Let me check. Didn't I see it correctly? Okay, waist circumference is okay. So I should have moved this waist height back to this. By mistake, I have moved this waist circumference. So now you see that it has got 0.96 and it has got AUC of 0.89. So whether these two are statistically significant or not, AUC, that difference of this area under the curve, you can see with the DeLong's test and you can see that the overall p-value, it is significant. It is 1.16 e minus e 07 means those many zeros are there in front of this one. That means it is significant. There is a difference of AUC of 0 0.066 and this is the uh, confidence interval and uh, this uh, is the significance. So this I was talking about the DeLong's test. So you can click that. And this is the direction. One option is the direction. So in this case, I have taken a cutoff more than equal to. So more than equal to, I want to keep it as a positive. So that's why this you can see. If you uh, click this like less than equal to, then it will be different. So depending on your cutoff, you can decide whether it is a more than equal to or less than equal to. Less than. It's not equal to. More than equal to comes at one place. So this is the uh, various options. And if you wish to click, like if you see the sensitivity specificity that is there, there are other options like lowest smoothing and uh, standard error bar. So if you want your curve to be smoothened, I'm not discussing this right now because these are, these are not very important. Uh, so that's why uh, till now, if you have people, uh, if you have understood or any other question, uh, if I can answer, then, uh, you are most welcome. Else, we'll move to the breakout room and practice there and solve uh, your individual problems also. Questions? Any questions? Or we are here. You do it once in the breakout room and then again you can come back to the main room once you are done or you can ask that in the breakout room also. So there are eight uh, breakout rooms. And uh, uh, I, I, I will request if few people agree, then Dr. Poonam.
So we are all are back in the main room. So how was the experience? Could you learn all those concepts which we discussed? So what is the question matrix score? Okay, that comes when you entered one variable. So I have practiced the steps Manoj is writing. Tie breakers, metric tolerance. Okay. So I'll I will not explain all these, but uh, the relevant one, which uh, so see there is something known as the matrix. So we discuss this here. There are there are a lot of methods to decide for these uh, you know calculation of the, uh, the this metric score you have seen this metric score and uh, this method is the maximize matrix the other method like minimize matrix loess spline boot kernel they are the other ways but the most commonly is the maximize matrix and then coming to the matrix this is regarding the decision to take the decide the cutoff remember we discussed that uh, there are 34, I have not told you, but there are 34 ways to decide about the cutoff. And one of the ways is the uh, this Uden's index. This uh, uh, It can be Uden's index or it can be here. It is the sum of sensitivity and specificity. That's why you will see, can you see a matrix score here? By default, these are the options in the Jam movie. This is the matrix score. And see, this value is like, if you add one in this Uden's index, that will give you the value of uh, this metric score because this is the sum of sensitivity and specificity. So this is using this to define uh, this cutoff. And then these, these are the ties. So ties are for, if you see the uh, this optimal cutoff point, so these ties are if you if like if I change it to the mean optimal cutoff point. So you will see that uh, it tells you that this is not uh, like this option. I think there is a uh, this is still developing because if you see uh, they are still adding module to it. So it is not all the options are not functional right now. And uh, this uh, this ties is I guess it is related to the mean optimal cutoff point or median optimal cutoff point or all optimal cutoff point. So we have tested this, I think, let, let me put one, one variable here. If I change this regarding, uh, because this is regarding all optimal. If you change this to mean and median, the result is not appearing. So this we were not able to crack. This direction, it is uh, like I have discussed, like more than equal to or less than uh, less than. And this bootstrap is again like how many times it runs. Uh, this cutoff score. Uh, this also, I don't know, maybe if you want to specify a cutoff score uh, because of uh, some pre-existing literature review, then you can use that. But still, I have not checked this cutoff score. In this, what we could interpret that is regarding this matrix because if you see it can use the uh, even the odds ratio there is something known as the f1 score accuracy those things can also be used to decide the cutoff like if you use the let's see odds ratio if you take the odds ratio for decision of cutoff you will see that here you will see the odds ratio and this also whatever possibility is there in 2 by 2 table so in two by two table, you can calculate odds ratio. You can calculate. Oh, you can mute. 
and you can uh, use this uh, kohan kappa also right because in 2 by 2 table we can uh, use the kohan kappa also but by default we use the sum of sensitivity and specificity udense. and udense is there again this matrix is like this matrix score now one participant has asked how to decide like kiran mai has asked how to decide about the direction so that you know like the higher values as a clinician you know that because that will be a parameter so the high value because normal range you have got in this case like waist height ratio or waist hip ratio so higher value is definitely at a risk uh, so you know that it should be uh, if you want to predict the disease if you want to predict the healthy so it will be the other way round then in this case i will have to go with this uh, positive class is zero if i am saying that uh, i want to say that who are not diseased but you see that generally we uh, say that a cut off more than that will be diseased so that direction we decide based on the biological value uh, which we have and that's how this more than equal to and like in the case of hemoglobin you know that if the hemoglobin is less we say that it is uh, anemia so in that case you will go with less than equal to uh, 10 or less than equal to 11 or 12 whatever the cut off is so depending on the biological value because you have you uh, we uh, in the team you have got a clinician you have got a statistician or epidemiologist so it's a team work all research so the clinician knows that uh, which value whether the high crp or calcitonin because it's a inflammatory marker or with the review also you know that the test which you have developed because the development of test is again a entire process so that manufacturer or the uh, because they are also researcher or the clinician they know that higher the value like let's say wbc we know that it is higher or the uh, like pro calcitonin it is higher but there are like uh, where the less like we say that hdl if it is less then it is not a good marker so depending on those like normal range is there for all uh, biological these parameter because all the tests th these are there to uh, for all these biological parameters so that's why this more than equal to and less than equal to uh, decides about this uh, direction depending on the review and the depending on the clinician judgment then i think there is a, a more question don't understand the direction So, Robin, now is it clear how to and uh, take uh, tell the direction? So, Dr. Shamshad, can you show me the chat? Uh, more. So, any other question? Uh, apart from uh, so, the, uh, like all these options are. I I, I should say that uh, don't uh, put much of your brain now in this because it is still developing. If you see the documentation, if you can go. here you you try reading this documentation and you will have some idea regarding this again i wanted to tell one more option regarding the change of uh, graph appearance so if you want to change the appearance of graph can you see there is a three uh, here there is there is a three dots here so if you click that you can like uh, change the format of result also if you want to keep this reference hidden if you want like codes to be written then you can click on this uh, syntax mod here i have clicked this plot theme as default if you want to change this to hadley maybe uh, you can just see how it appears so the graph will appear something like this see on the background it is the, uh, the uh, this uh, thing is there but again you can also click the color palette i have clicked dark if you don't want to click if you want to click this jamovi then it will be like this the graph will be like this so depending on the uh, your you can keep on trying the nature of the graph if you want to change the this there is a option you can use this and you can do some 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 like uh, alterations okay so thank you everyone and if there are no more questions regarding the certificates so we will uh, give you 10 mcqs and uh, you have to uh, like it will be a single option type and attempt those mcqs and then it certificates will be generated automatically
uh, the only thing is you have to put like a name correctly and then only you can uh, uh, like get the certificate with the correct name in case of any query you can approach us in that whatsapp group or you can mail us uh, thank you and uh, i think uh, i'm uh, very much thankful to all our mentors uh, saket neha haripriya sarita rajat thank you rajat and thank you all and uh, thank you to prashant and uh, nitesh who have uh, like uh, agreed to give that mentorship and uh, naveen thank you naveen for conducting this session uh, i think i uh, if i forgot to thank uh, anyone else then i'm sorry and akanksha too i think i think akanksha also uh, seen one of the breakout room uh, so thank you everyone uh, i think we we should conclude today's session okay so remain connected uh, yes <laughs> neha yes neha thank you okay Neha is like this. She is always flawless. Okay. And all others mentor too. Like uh, all of you must have seen Saket and Rajat. They, they all are good. Okay. So thank you everyone. We are concluding uh, today's session. Yes. Thank you ma'am. Thank, thank you ma'am for the today's session it was very good session actually it made the using jamovi for the roc call made look so easy thank you ma'am actually jamovi and hoping to easy. in the yes ma'am and uh, hoping to meet you in the next session and uh, for all the participants we request that you visit our website meritindia.org and follow us on youtube channel and uh, stay connected Thank you. Happy learning. Thank you.